NSF, as you all know, has done amazing things. I described the DNA of NSF in the following way. The DNA of NSF is the curiosity to a discovery-based exploration that one strand of the DNA. The other strand of the DNA is user-inspired solutions-focused uh, translations and narrations. These are not part of a pipeline. These are highly intertwined. And you see this in action here every day. Right? And so it's very important for NSF, therefore, to make sure that this twin strands of the DNA is expressed everywhere across the nation, not limited to a few institutions as important as they are, not limited to a few places as important as they are, but it can be anywhere and everywhere across our nation. So this is something that we are working really hard. We launched a new directorate, the TIP directorate, the Technology Innovation Partnership directorate, the first new directorate in 31 years at NSF. And we wanted to get it done very, very quickly, within a year, so the programs like the Regional Innovation Engines can then exercise that innovative mindset everywhere across our nation. We also want to launch the Granted program, if you've heard of that, Growing Research Access to Nationally Transferred Network at the University, so that all the institutions have the capacity to be able to take their ideas and express it in a form that can transcend the gold standard for the process of NSF. Because I fundamentally believe, and I know all of us share this, talent and ideas are democratized. And therefore, if success in NSF is determined by how those ideas that are everywhere can transcend the gold standard merit review process. It means that institutions that don't have the capacity to do that are you know, connected to that capacity to be able to exercise that idea in, in, the, in the fullest form. And talking about capacity expansion, what better program than EBSCO? Right? The EBSCO program here clearly has demonstrated tremendous since 2001 what you've been able to accomplish with the EBSCO program. When you look at the outcomes, they speak for themselves. Right? 37 new faculty hires were made as part of the EBSCO, the EBSCO program. Right? Thousands of publications, and over 1,000 publications that have come because of the EBSCO program. Right? So you've got 52 postgraduate, uh, postdoctoral fellows that are made possible. 30 early career, 30 early career award uh, grants that people have received because of the EBSCO program. Right? And because the enablement of that kind of an infrastructure that allows people to be able to express their ideas, close to 500 external grants have been received here, totaling almost under 96, 200 million dollars, right? So all of this is made possible because of the fact the EPSCO program here is so vibrant and you have all been part of that and made it successful. And so that's why I say that this is an exemplar of the EPSCO program, to be able to see this in action. And so I'm thrilled, therefore, to have this new EBSCO you know, platform, the RIA program, of $20 million, which will be announced, which is announced. And this is focused on something that's very important to Alaska, which is the climate change and its impact on the state of Alaska. So looking at how you assess the impact that is already happening, how do we then configure it through research and through you know, practical me mechanisms by which you can find real solutions to addressing this impact. I always say that we have to be smart about climate. The science and technology, the SNT, for <coughs> mitigation, adaptation, and resilience. The M, the A, and the R. How do you mitigate? How do you adapt? How do you build resilient futures through science and technology? As the book ended. That's how we can be smart about climate. So here, if you're doing this in real time, and this EBSCO therefore grant will enable you to do better in terms of finding real solutions, in terms of engaging with the community, which is the most important thing, because it's important to have everybody involved and the community-based solutions. You have to be humble enough to be able to listen to the community and consider solutions based on what we listen, but not what we talk. So how do you listen? How do you make sure that women indigenous peoples, farmers, people from rural communities. How do you make sure that you bring all of them engaged in what we do so that they can contribute and therefore benefit from it? And that we all benefit from it. And that's how we are truly going to make the, the, the transformation possible. But to look what happens then is you build the capacity of researchers all across the state of Alaska. Researchers, 
who are experts like the graduate students that I just met a few minutes ago, and the faculty members who are doing this in context and building the research capacity. But also at the same time, you're training the workforce for the future. Everywhere I go, I say, what is the secret sauce that makes this place unique? And it turns out here, the Arctic context, the climate change context, and a whole lot of other things in terms of food security and other things, makes this place unique. I call it the living laboratory, if you like. You actually are part of the living laboratory. Therefore, you can not only find solutions, you can actually create those solutions in ways that can impact the economy and national security and the health and well-being of the citizens. And that's what NSF wants to do. Wants to not only promote the fundamental discovery work and finding solutions, but actually being able to translate them into the industries of the future, the economy of the future, the workforce of the future, so that this place then becomes even more vibrant because of all of that together, that everyone feels that I have a part of this and that I can play in this sandbox and make our place better and our nation better and the globe at large better. And so I'm thrilled to be here. I'm used to 90 minute lecture slots. <laughs> and when I come to a university, I get trapped into the thinking. <laughs> and it feels like a comfortable classroom, <laughs> like a graduate seminar. <laughs> so therefore, I'm going to control my urge to talk more. <laughs> and I'm going to let Larry speak. So thank you.